everyone. My name is George and this is Sheen. Uh, we're both from uh, MPS, Monolithic Power Systems. And today we're going to be talking to you guys about how our power modules can be optimized to achieve an ultra low noise and ripple performance. So just to give you guys a little bit of background, uh, with the, the tremendous growth that we've been seeing in wireless networks and data centers, around the world and the demand that that is creating is really putting a lot of pressure on us creating power regulators that can not only achieve high power density but can also achieve uh, ultra fast transient performance and high efficiency. Now when we look in the, the industry today there are a lot of different um, providers and applications that fit and need these high performance uh, RF transceivers. And so what we, what we know is that the performance of any RF data converter is closely coupled with the noise level of the regulator itself. And so that is why today, uh, most of the time it's chosen that an LDO is used in these applications. But what we are here to talk about today is how a switching regulator can be used to achieve much higher efficiency than an LDO while still uh, achieving the very low noise performance uh, that an LDO would provide. Uh, so for the uh, voltage regulator, we can firstly check the uh, switching waveforms. As we can see on the picture here is a voltage regulator uh, with a bug topology. So for the operation principle of the bug, we can see that when, the, when we turn on S1 switch and turn off S2, uh, the inductor will be charged and the current of the inductor will increase. And then when we turn on S2 and turn off S1, the inductor current will be discharged. The, the, current, the current change of the inductor will, uh, co will lead to the voltage change on the output uh, capacitor, which will generate the output uh, Voltage output ripple, output voltage ripple. Suppose we are we are work, we are operate the we are, we are operate the, mo the module in the CCM operation, which can bring bring slow ripple and light load. The output voltage ripple can be uh, uh, estimated based on the equation here. So ideally, we can uh, we can see that if we put if we put the output capacitor which is large enough. Basically, we can e eliminate, uh, entirely eliminate the water ripple amplitude. But in practice, this is not uh, the case. As we can see, that firstly, we don't have the capacitor which can be put close to, close to our module uh, with uh, infinite uh, capacitance. Also, we can understand this uh, as an understand the function of the output capacitor. Uh, like this, it provides a low. It, it provides a uh, path for the high, low impedance path for the high frequency component. So, uh, in practice, if we try to increase the capacitance on the output, we need to put more more capacitors, and uh, the ceramic capacitor with low ESR is preferred. As you can see on this picture is an example of how we place the output capacitor for the MPM 3833C power module. Firstly, we put a capacitor uh, which is clo very close to the output plane of the uh, output and the ground. If we want to increase the capacitance to eliminate the output water ripple, we need to put more capa ceramic capacitors in parallel. The issue with this uh, solution is that uh, the capacitor which is located further from the uh, power module will introduce more uh, parasitic inductance and parasitic resistance on the loop. And uh, based, as we just mentioned, that uh, the function of the capacitor is to provide a low impedance high for, uh, pass for the high frequency component. But uh, the, in, uh, the increase on the parasitic, uh, parasitic inductance and the uh, resistance will, also, will keep this path put the impedance of this path to increase. So that's, uh, so that's why uh, more, by putting more and more output capacitor cannot help us to significantly reduce the output uh, water ripple. 
Uh, we also put this uh, analysis uh, into the simulation by uh, Simplex. As we can see, uh, the operation condition of our module is that the wind voltage is 5 volt, we are voltage is 1.2 volt, and the load is 2 ampere. Firstly, we put a 22 microfarad output capacitor on uh, for the module. As you can see, the output, output voltage ripple is 4 millivolt mini to peak. Then we try to add more output capacitor. Uh, in the figure B, we, uh, we show the result with three 22 microfarad output capacitor, and the output voltage ripple is reduced to 2 millivolt to peak, peak to peak. And then up we put four output capacitor in parallel. As you can see, the peak to peak. Uh, water ripple can only reduce the from 2 millivolt to 1.7 millivolt. So that's why the, by putting more and more output capacitors cannot help us to achieve the ultra low noise design. Uh, and uh, well, uh, and the, the, the solution by MPS to uh, design the ultra power module with the ultra low uh, noise is to add a second stage filter after the uh, output capacitor. The filter is basically is cascaded uh, through the output capacitor with the main power stage. And uh, normally, normally by using the output capacitor itself, the output voltage ripple magnitude can be reduced to uh, one, mi one millivolt level. But if, if we want to achieve the output voltage ripple to the micro microvolt level, we need to add this second stage filter. And the filter is consists of a uh, inductor and a capacitor. Uh, no, uh, so for the design of this filter, firstly we will design the output. We will calculate the output capacitor to make sure the output voltage ripple on this stage can be reduced to. 5 millivolt to 10 millivolt range. This range can be adjusted slightly based on your design. And then we, we are going to select the um, inductor for the sta uh, second stage filter. Uh, we can pick the inductor uh, with, uh, within the range of 0.22 mi microfarad to 1 microfarad value. Uh, and uh, the inductor should have selected to have a minimal DCR to ensure the uh, regulation and performance and the thermal performance of the entire system. So for the system design, we, 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 we will, normally we will have the target for the output water ripple. So in this case, we, will, can, we can have the attenuation uh, of the second stage filter design by, uh, since we know the water ripple on the C out and the water ripple on the C1. And then, since the filter is the LC filter, which is the second order system, uh, which has uh, 40, 40 dB uh, decrease on the body plot. Uh, by this way, we can you know, we can uh, design the corner the cutoff frequency uh, to make sure the uh, ultra low noise and the formula is as shown below. And with this formula, and also we know about the uh, uh, induct. We have suppose we have already selected the inductor for the filter. Then we can easily calculate how much capacitance. Uh, is required for C1. Additionally, uh, basically, as we just mentioned, that uh, our second stage filter is a LC filter, which is a second order system. And this, um, this system uh, can potentially can bring in some, uh, has a renaissance, and which can bring in the uh, undesired undes ringing and uh, amplify the output rate of during the load transit. So to avoid the undesired ringing and the low transit, we need to add enough damping to the system. As we, as we know that the inductor normally has a DCR, but this DCR typically is very small and which cannot provide enough damp. So we need to add, add such a damping branch to the entire network. The design, uh, uh, as you can see here for the simulation in the simplest, uh, with, with, for the under damper system, uh, during the low transit, there are significant raining for uh, quite a while. But for the over damper LC filter, the raining is pretty limited. And uh, here is the uh, form standard criteria to select the damping resistor value, uh, which is based on this equation. Yeah, so when we look at as the examples 
going forward in, in, in real life applications, one of those being the RFSOC chipset that we were targeting. You can see here as laid out for the ADC targets for the ripple magnitudes are less than one millivolt in most cases as to why we had to design a new uh, circuit to be able to meet these standards. So the traditional approach, as I had mentioned, being the, the LDO approach, in this case, and this is currently the industry standard that's being used, has high losses, um, and but it can also achieve the noise level that is desired for most of these uh, ADC applications. So with our solution, as shown here, we have our, our um, evaluation board that has our power module solution plus our passive filter solution as well, uh, which now customers have been able to use to achieve this low noise performance while as well achieving the high efficiency performance, which shown here now is comparable, the noise is comparable to the, the LDO solution, but at the same time we can exceed significantly the efficiency by the LDO. So this creates a much, much less of a, a thermal issue now for these designs where before when LDOs were having very high efficiency loss, um, we can now reduce that and basically provide a much better overall solution using our um, power module switching solution. Uh, so uh, here is a application example uh, by our customer. The application case is that the V in of the power module is 5 volts, V out is 0.925 volts. Volt. The output currently is 2 ampere. And the required target ripple magnitude is only 20 micro volt by our customer. And but with this with this, this application case, we would like to uh, summarize how to the design uh, guideline for the second stage filter, uh, which can help us to get the actual low noise design of the R module. So firstly, we need to calculate the we need to calculate the voltage ripple with the uh, output capacitor. Normally for the power module, 22 microfarad output capacitor is required, uh, is pretty enough. And uh, with this application case, the corresponding peak-to-peak -peak voltage ripple on the output capacitor is 3.3.2 millivolt. Then as we know, as we know, the required of uh, water ripple magnitude is 20 microvolt. Then we can easily get the attenuation of the second stage filter, and and uh, according uh, and also the uh, cutoff frequency. As you see that uh, the cutoff frequency design in this case is at 10 times uh, less than the switching frequency, which is uh, nine, uh, around 91 kilohertz. And also, uh, we picked the induct we selected the inductor for the two ampere application, which is 0 uh, 24 micro hour. And uh, by by taking this inductor value into the uh, combine this inductor value with the cutoff frequency we just calculated, we can we can get the output capacitor C1 value we, we, we need, which is 16.25 micro hour. And in, that, in this case, actually, more output capacitors are used to, to achieve even better load and transient performance. So, uh, and uh, the, uh, the final uh, C1 design in, in our uh, customer application is actually 288 microfarad. And the corresponding, based on the criteria for the damping resistor design, the corresponding damping resistor is uh, at least uh, uh, 58 uh, minimum. So basically, that's how we design the uh, second stage uh, filter uh, to achieve the actual uh, actual low noise design. And uh, that would be all for the presentation. And if there's any question, please contact us and let us know.